Right, okay, so hopefully now we can actually get on with making this bread. So the first stage is quite simple. Um, essentially what you start is, is something called the auto leaves. Um, so this sounds like it might be um, something that's complicated, but it's not. What you do is you mix, you mix your flour in your water and you let it sit. That's what you do. Um, so I'm going to measure out a kilo of flour here. And the purpose of this step is essentially to let the, um, the flour and the gluten hydrate um, without you putting in any work. So you may have noticed if you mix the dough before, when you first mix the water and flour together, it forms this really kind of messy, shaggy mass. Um, and it's kind of falling apart and it's kind of unraveling and it's kind of almost a bit of like, it's almost like alive in a way. Um, and to skip that messy kind of uh, process uh, of where that gluten is first developing and that, and that hydration is first starting, that mixing is, is kind of going, um, you just give it a few minutes. So I boiled this kettle off a little while ago. Um, now you want water that is um, between 32 and 35 degrees. Um, that is what is again suggested in um, the recipes that I follow. And I should say, I don't think I've said this already, but um, I'm not a sort of baking professional. Um, I'm not a professional at um, I'm not a professional at baking bread. What I can do is bake one type of bread relatively well, and I've done it quite a few times. Um, so that is the extent of my expertise. I can read a recipe. Um, you come to find, after you mess up enough loaves of bread, you start thinking about them, you know, you start almost ruminating about the bread, like, why did I do that? Or why did this happen? Or why, you know, why is this not going well? Um, so that's kind of why I've got sort of a few more thoughts about bread. It's become a bit of an obsession. Um, so that water's 34 um, degrees. It's close enough. I don't want to fiddle around with it too much. Um, so we went with a kilo of uh, flour. We're going in with um, 780 grams of water. The only thing you can get away with measuring volumetrically is water because a gram is defined through the volume of water. That's a fun fact for you. Um, so one milliliter is actually equivalent to one square centimeter, which is equivalent to exactly to one gram. Um, so if there's one thing that you're allowed to measure as a volume, it's water, because it defines what a gram is. Isn't that amazing? Um, so this is the classic uh, mixing tool um, for bread dough. It's the, the wrong end of a uh, wooden spoon. Um, so very simply, it's going to mix this around. I'll bring the camera just a little bit closer in a second, just so you can see this coming together. So not much um, rocket science going on here. Just very simply incorporating this, um, this water and flour into a dough. And as you can see, there's lots of dry flour in here. And if you mix dough by hand, this usually becomes a bit of a mess. Um, when you have a dough which isn't homogenized, essentially it means it's, it's gonna be messier when you've got two different uh, sort of states in there. So you've got the dry flour, you've got the, the wet dough forming, and you've kind of got everything in between. It becomes a bit messy. So I will try and sort of get this done relatively quickly. This shouldn't, this should, should, only, should only take a couple of minutes. And as you can see, it's nicely coming together now. What I tend to find is there'll be a, a bit of pesky kind of um, flour at the bottom, which just for some reason won't ever kind of fully mix in. Um, and I will just say now as well quickly, 
Another piece of equipment I didn't mention uh, was a dough scraper. This is a really um, nice thing to have as well. Um, it's not so useful here. I just wanted to get it out just to, just, just to show you. Usually you want to wet this so it doesn't get dough stuck to it like I've just done there. Um, but as you can see, this helps you clean up the edges and this can be really helpful later on for handling the dough as well. So we're pretty much there actually. So this is, this is called um, by bakers, this is called a shaggy mass. Um, so as you can see, there's lots of kind of roughness and there's, there's kind of not much kind of proper kind of incorporation here, but there's no dry uh, bits of flour um, that I can sort of really see. So that's done now, that's, uh, that's ready to auto lease. And all you've got to do now is um, put a bit of sort of uh, cling film on there, cover it up, and you leave it for and about 20 minutes, you can go half an hour, you can go 60 minutes if you like, um, but 20 to 30 minutes is kind of the ballpark uh, for an auto lease. So it's going to leave that to sit. So here we are a little while later. I'll take off this cling film here. And the dough has auto leased. So if I, this, if I stick this in here, you can see that the dough has started forming and that gluten has started developing. So if gluten starts forming um, when it comes in contact with water. So our next two ingredients, um, two and final I suppose. Uh, so we've got that 0 0.8 grams of yeast uh, measured out here. So um, yep, got no idea what that is in a, in a volume, that's probably Yep, I'm not even going to try. Um, so I'm just going to sprinkle this over. Um, the more evenly you spread it out, the less mixing you have to do um, to an extent. And so I'm just going to quickly just kind of wash that around. And I mean, one reason that I sort of do that is because the next ingredient you add is salt. Um, salt can kill yeast. Um, don't test me on that, don't test me to see how, how long it takes or um, the practicalities of whether it, you know, whether it instantly dies. Essentially it, in, it inhibits um, yeast activity, so you don't sort of want to add them on top of each other really, um, just to kind of eliminate that chance. So that was actually 22 grams of salt, and this is going to make two loaves of bread. Um, and I'm just going to quickly mix this up with the um, high-tech wooden spoon um, but at the end of the day you will have to get in there with your hands as well so as you can see look that is really actually starting to come together already um, you can see there's structure in there you can see there's something going on there's a there's a network there's a kind of spider's web structure um, of protein in there so I'm just going to quickly wash my hands and get involved. So one little tip I would have um, for bread dough in general is you kind of don't force it to do anything. You kind of just let it happen. Um, the processes, the kind of the structure, um, a lot of that mixing happens naturally just over time. Um, you're just kind of coaxing it along in a way. Um, so you don't have to kind of um, go too crazy. So the process here is um, a process of stretching, folding over, rotating and then stretching and folding over. So we're just going round in a circle. And once you've done that a, a few times, we're going in for a, a pincer. So we're just kind of almost creating those, those kind of um, those web-like structures, those kind of layers of, of protein networks on top of each other. Of course, you don't have to sort of be thinking about what's going, what's going on, it just happens. Um, but that is what's happening, so you're folding those over and then also mixing in the salt and the yeast. And now you'd have seen, because those were nicely, uh, finely kind of processed, um, process what I mean is just how, how small those particles are. Um, 
not necessarily sort of how much it's been kind of you know processed in a factory or, or what have you um, but it's just a fine it's just a fine kind of a grain I suppose of, of salt um, and what I'm doing here as well as I'm dipping um, here we go dipping my hand in some water and that kind of forms a kind of temporary kind of barrier in a way um, between your skin and, and the dough. If you went in with a kind of dry hand, then that dough kind of almost seeks out, <laughs> seeks out and sticks um, to, your, to your skin. But as you can see, I sort of, because I've, I've kept my hand wet, there is a bit of dough and it will stick. It does tend to stick as well if you've got sort of <laughs> bits of, um, if you've got hair in your hands as well. I, I found it kind of it quite likes to sort of grab onto follicles and obviously it's around the nails as well. It does get a bit messy. Sorry, that did sound a bit, um, almost a bit kind of grotesque. So I've, I've been probably almost over mixing this, but, um, so I'll just kind of give you a sense. Look, so I'm putting my hand through this dough and you can see that there's, there's definitely something going on here. But as you just saw it tear as well, that gluten is forming. But it's not a kind of a, people quite often um, kind of quote a kind of window pane test. But I've, I've, you know, I've barely spent a few minutes doing that. And that's because the reason it's come together so quickly is because of that auto leaves. Um, that hydration uh, process and gluten formation before you even put your hands um, on the dough. Um, it's sort of, it gets you really ahead. So. That's nicely, nicely mixed. Essentially what you're, gonna, what you're doing, I mean, this is what I'm, I'm doing in this stage really, is I'm feeling to make sure that all of the particles of salt and yeast are kind of nicely incorporated. So if I've got a slightly sort of coarser salt, um, it'll take longer, but I sort of, I can just feel that there's no kind of grains particularly. I might, find, I might be able to get a, a couple there, but this will sit for a long time. So if they're not hydrated now, they will eventually hydrate. Um, so I'm just going to quickly, I'll do one more pass. And I will just say um, something I mentioned earlier about the addition of um, fat into a dough. What fat does is it coats the gluten and stops it um, being hydrated by water. So it essentially stops the, um, the structural um, effects of, of that gluten, which means that the dough is going to appear to be more wet. Um, you can put it like that. So because that gluten is covered by a layer of kind of fat or oil, um, it can't form the structures, it can't form that nice kind of, that structure that you can see there. Um, so it would almost like that the protein has low, uh, the flour has low protein content and it will be a bit uh, wetter, a bit slacker. So people do this, um, or they add um, fats to their dough to make a more tender crumb, a more tender bread. Um, and quite often this will be added to um, bread such as um, focaccia and uh, other types of bread. Um, although that's kind of more to do with the crust. But anyway, I digress. So that's kind of the first stage of mixing. That's pretty well mixed actually. I usually wouldn't do it for that long. Um, and at this point you just let it sit there for about another 20 minutes. So this now is nicely mixed and it's gonna go, it's gonna go through a process of folding. So in about 20 minutes time, I'm gonna come back and just quickly fold it, following essentially the same process there that I was just doing without the sort of pincer action. Um, and then I'll come back 20 minutes after that as well and do another fold. So I'll see you back there. So I'll just quickly show you the process of folding the dough. And this is quite a simple process as well. So again, just wetting the hand. So what you um, will see is that the dough has kind of settled in um, into the kind of corners here. So it's kind of, I guess the top is flat, I guess you could say. Um, and this time we're gonna just slightly more kind of um, noticeably stretching it upwards, feeling the point of natural tension um, of the dough, folding it over itself, and then rotating and repeating. So this is just bringing the dough together. If 
you only really have to do this maybe um, two times round the dough. And you'll see that it's slightly pulled away from the sides here. So it's slightly more in, in a mass um, rather than just flat. And what I will do as well is I'll just kind of get this moving. And it's quite nice as well just to flip it over as well. You have to get a bit involved to do that. Um, and it looks very nice, but I'm just going to scrape off my, uh, scrape off my hands and scrape off the sides. So there we go. You should be able to see it's pulled away from the sides here. Um, it's kind of hard to demonstrate <laughs> with the lighting, um, but it's just slightly more round. Um, so you do that um, about 20 minutes after the first mix. Um, for this dough, you want to get in um, two to three folds within the first sort of hour to an hour and a half. Um, it's not too fussy about when it happens. The only thing really is that once the yeast starts activating, air starts filling those, those pockets and it starts filling up the structure. So those folds that you put into it are just a bit more, I mean, they're just a bit looser. Um, it's something that's hard to kind of explain unless you kind of felt it. Um, but try and get it, you know, try and um, fold this dough within the first hour to hour and a half, um, two to three times, and then you're going to leave this overnight for about 12 hours. So you can start mixing this dough at seven o'clock. Um, it'll finish up around, you know, after you've done all the kind of waiting times and, and bits and bobs, you know, let's say you finish around nine and then tomorrow morning you, um, you might tip it out at nine o'clock. Um, it depends on sort of the temperature in, in, in the room that you're doing it in. It depends on well, it's the kitchen, um, how fast this dough develops as well overnight. Um, but I don't stress about it too much. I, I recommend that you don't stress about it too much either. Um, 12 to 14 hours at sort of 21 degrees is kind of pretty standard. Um, you know, don't do it really early in the evening. Um, and then, pick, you know, pick it up at, you know, let's say you, you mixed it at six and it's really about when you add that yeast. So if you added the yeast at six o'clock uh, in the evening and come back to it at 11, you know, you might be pushing it because you've kind of added, you know, five hours onto that kind of 12 hour, that 12 hour window. Um, but you'll still get bread at the end of the day, to be honest. Um, it's just gonna be whether the outcome is kind of this optimal, you know, nicely risen, um, nicely structured loaf. Um, and of course, bread has many, many uh, challenges. Um, challenges that you basically don't know, <laughs> you don't know what they are until they happen. Um, so you kind of just have to trial and error. Um, but I think if you follow this process, I mean, I don't think this process is too complicated. Um, if you do the right things, it should work out. If it doesn't, then you've got to try and figure out what's wrong. Um, that's the process that I've, <laughs> I've been on. So I can, only thing I can do is show you what works for me. So there we are. So that is our dough. That's going to be left for about 12 hours until tomorrow morning. Um, it'll rise considerably. You'll see it tomorrow. It'll look totally weird and different. Um, and there we go. Here's just one final thing I thought I'd mention is the ideal temperature for yeast, um, the actual dough itself is around 24 degrees. Now, if you remember, I put in 34 degree water, which is probably a little bit warm. You want to put sort of closer to 35 if your kitchen is a bit colder. So maybe sort of if your kitchen's 18 degrees or 19 degrees, you might put in 35 degree water. If your kitchen's sort of more towards sort of 22, 25 degrees, and you'll put, want to put in the lower end of that, um, of that, of that spectrum, so sort of towards 32, um, 31 degree water. And that's all with the intention, <laughs> that sounds all very complicated with all the numbers, um, that's all with the intention of getting the dough to be around 24 degrees um, while it's fermenting. So this is going to cool down over you know, the next few hours um, and, and through the evening, uh, through, well through the night I should, I should say, overnight. Um, so it's going to go from 26 to 25 for, you know, all the way down to room temperature. Um, but this heat will just allow that yeast to sort of activate um, and start moving and start, um, well, exactly, activate. <laughs> Don't have to say anything more than that. Um, 
But so that's at 26, that's quite nice. 24 is, is ideal, that's all I can say. Uh, there we go.